What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Matt here. We are in the C8 Corvette. We're getting it repositioned into the garage. If you guys remember from last video, if you guys haven't seen last video, we went up to um, the Chevrolet dealership. Sorry. Went up there for a warranty claim and we got denied. All right, so we're gonna jack it up. I'm gonna show you guys what a leaky shock looks like on the Corvette. I'm also gonna check the other four because I did find the part on rockauto.com for $122. Uh, I believe Chevrolet quoted me $280 plus insulation, so it counts like 800. So each shock's only 122 on Rock Auto, so we're gonna get this thing up in the air. We're going to check all the other shocks, make sure we don't have to replace any of the other ones, and then get that ordered. And then we also have a mod to do today. Shirt says it all, Paragon. All right guys, so really quick recap, if you guys didn't see last video, I found a pool of fluid on the garage floor, match it up with where the shock wheel is, this area, and knew right away what we had. In the past, around 7,000 miles, I had a leaky shock on my front driver's side, and then about 22,000 miles, I had a leaky shock on my passenger side. So I knew right away what we were dealing with in the rear. So naturally, our next step was to go down to Chevrolet. We tried to put in a warranty claim for that rear shock. We were denied because of the mods on the car. We've lowered it, put aftermarket wheels, they no longer wanted to do the warranty claim. So instead, they gave me a quote for the repair. We've got $286 for the part, $400 in labor. The part number is here, 84905755. Total for that repair, looking at 822.87. We did a little research and went onto rockauto.com for that same exact genuine part number, 849. 05755. They have it on there for 122.89. So with the help from one of my buddies, the driver mod, you guys have seen him on the channel a couple times. He actually lowered this car. We'll be able to knock this out pretty easily. In a couple of weeks, we got the lowering couplers coming for the front end. So when we get those changed out with Anthony, we'll go ahead and get him to replace the rear shocks as well. But today I'm gonna to show you guys how I get this thing jacked up in the air. It is not easy, it's a pain in the butt. And then uh, we'll show you guys what a leaky shock looks like. We'll check all the other ones and then we'll get that Paragon part installed today. All right, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get this thing jacked up. So you guys will notice we have a slight issue. When we go ahead and try to get this thing jacked up, the side skirt does get in the way, hits the jack right there. Can't quite get to the puck. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this thing up. Let's go ahead and get this thing lifted up. All right, car is up. We're gonna go ahead and open the door. Shut the car off, we'll leave the door open because if the door gets shut, the car will go back down. Whoop, almost shut the door. All right, now over on the passenger side, we will see a lot more clearance. Let's see if we can get to the puck. The puck's right over here. It's pretty far in there. We're not gonna make it that far in. It gets a little too far, it's too deep, and the side skirts protrude out too far, and it ends up hitting this. What we're gonna do, the game plan is gonna be to roll these front wheels up on some two by fours, then jack it up, then jack up the rear, and we can check out that shock. So this is what I did last time. I took a two by four, and I cut it in half, and made it myself little ramps. So we're just gonna slide these back behind the wheels, and then just try to get them to come up that one inch. Two inches, two by four, right? Two inches. Is that two inches? Wait a second, are two by fours really two by four? No! What? One and a half. Are they four inches wide? Three and a half? Wait. Are two by fours one and a half by three now? Just looked it up. The two by four refers to rough cut green wood. It shrinks during drying and then dried wood is plain smooth. So finished lumber is supposed to be at one and a half by three. Well, I guess you learn something new every day. Two by fours are actually one and a half by three and a half. Huh, who would have thought? Not gonna lie guys, that went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to. We got that thing rolled up there. Too easy, that was nice and smooth. Let's see if the jack will fit now. I literally have, what, a couple millimeters of clearance right there? Barely any clearance, this thing barely fits. That two by four is just enough. All right, so let's go ahead and get her jacked up here. All right guys, we got the front of the car over here, we got the jack underneath the frame, and then over on the rear you'll notice Pretty much the entire jack is underneath the car. That's why we had to get the front jacked up before we could do the rear. That side skirt definitely sticks out way too far in reference to the puck. So went ahead and got that under there now. Now we can go ahead and jack the rear up. All right guys, car's jacked up. Let's jump underneath the car so I can show you what a leaky shock looks like. So if you look up under here, you've got your, your tire right here, your wheel, and then in here, I'm gonna zoom in because it's kind of hard to reach, but you'll see the bottom of the shock absorber right there. You'll notice that it looks pretty greasy, very uh, wet looking, bunch of gunk all over it, and even on the axle, as you guys can see, it's all dripped under there. So that's what you're looking for 
to find a failed shock. There's all that nastiness all over it. So that one's done. It's been done for a while. So the way we figured out that that shock was leaking was because we saw a few drips of fluid on the floor, matched it up with where it was coming from, and that's what we knew. So let's go jump on the driver's side and see if we have a leaky one over there. All right, so this is the driver's side. You notice everything is bone dry. No fluid, no nothing, so we are good on the driver's side. Passenger side is trash. And like I said, guys, we're gonna check all four. All right, so this is the passenger side. Looks good, everything's bone dry. And then over on the driver's side. Driver's side, how are we looking? I can't really see in there, I can barely see in there. I'm gonna check the footage, but I think it's dry. All right, so it looks like we only need one shock. We're gonna go back to rockauto.com. I think, did the prices go up a dollar in the time that we've made this video? There's, what? So, it looks like part cost is $123.79, shipping is 10 bucks, and taxes are nine, so we got a total of one forty four twenty two. dollars All right guys, went ahead and got that shock absorber ordered. It's on its way, it should be here in a week or two. Maybe the same time the Paragon coupler comes in, we can go and get both of those things knocked out. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing put back on the ground, and then we are gonna go ahead and get to our install for today. We got the car on the ground, let's check out what we're installing today. So our parts come from Paragon, paragonperf.com. We've got some billet strut tower support bars. These are gonna replace the OEM ones that we have on the car. They look a lot better. They've got all these machined holes. Maybe they even weigh less, I'm not sure. We'll check that out. Check out the weight savings if there is any. These things are supposed to be stronger, sturdier, supposed to make your car a little bit firmer, so super excited. Also, we are going to SEMA in November, so this is gonna help dress up this engine bay because let's be honest, she don't look that pretty right now. If you guys want to get your support bars, make sure you guys use promo code RWDC8BARS. That's going to get you guys 5% off. Guys, I do have to let y'all know that my promo codes for Paragon only last for 60 days. So if you guys see a video that's older than 60 days, that promo code is probably not going to work. And if you guys see a video come out with with the promo code, you guys might want to jump on those purchases right away because it's only good for those 60 days. The support bars also come with this bracket. This bracket is going to go ahead and tie to the support bar and then it's going to be a place for you to anchor down your EVAP lines and then also your mag ride lines if you have that as well. All right, so the tools we need are going to be a ratchet and a T40 Torx bit. We've got four bolts on each side, two and two, and I think that should get it out. Not torqued too much. Once you get all four of those bolts out, you're going to want to go to the front of the car and just tap it out of the front side. Like so. And pull that out. Wow, I was definitely wrong about the weight. So yeah, these things weigh absolutely nothing. It's just a hollow bar. This probably weighs, I don't even know, maybe a pound? These things, whew, solid. <laughs> weigh way more. But I'm pretty sure they make your car way safer. Let's see how much these things weigh. All right, let's see how much I weigh first. 154.2. 154.2 versus 154.4. All right, so the stock OEM bars weigh 0.2 pounds, so the pair weighs 0.4. Now let's see what the good old Paragon bar weighs. 158.8. I believe I was 154.2, so it was at 4.6 pounds each. Jeez. So what, a total of nine pounds, replacing, adding nine pounds to the car. But man, these things are sturdy. All right, to reinstall, we're just gonna do the exact opposite. You'll notice that on the bottom of the support bars is DR and then there's PS, so driver passenger. To figure out the orientation, it's pretty easy. Notice the spacing of the bolts on the rear. They're really tight and up front, it's a lot wider. Same thing with the mounts, they're really tight in the back. Wider up front, so let's set the rear end first. We're gonna put this thing back in just like we took it out. Pretty easy. Put these four bolts back in and we'll tighten her down. And then after you get those four down, driver's side's all set. What do you guys think? That looks way better than that. I actually like how much smaller it is too. Not so big and bulky. Man, looks good. Let's get to that other side. So over on the passenger side, you got basically the same exact thing as the driver's side. It's gonna be four bolts, but you just have one extra step. You've got this bracket here. This is for your EVAP lines and for your mag ride if you have that as well. One step that I missed over on the driver's side was this little bracket. There's two little holes on the bottom of that bar and you clip, you bolt this onto the bottom of it and then this is to, I guess, guide for your, your mag ride line. It comes with those brackets and these four bolts, so we're gonna go ahead and get this bracket bolted to the bottom of this for our EVAP lines. We're not gonna worry about that other bracket, for the driver's side bracket, because we don't have mag ride. All right, so grab a number three Allen wrench and then you're just gonna bolt 
the bracket to the bottom of the bar on the passenger side. This one tight. And then we're just going to get these four bolts off. All right, so we got all four bolts out. So we're going to go ahead and push from the front again to the inside of the engine bay. Just like that. Then we're going to grab our Paragon bar with bracket attached and put it in the back and slide it up in front. Get it lined up with the holes. All right, guys, there's the final product. What do you guys think? I think they look great. They look way better than the stock ones, that's for sure. They're probably a lot more sturdy, so I can't wait to get the shock done so I can get out and take this thing for a test rip. Remember, guys, if y'all want to get your strut tire support bars, make sure you head over to ParagonPerf.com. Use that promo code RWDC8BARS to get 5% off yours. Also, if you guys didn't see the last video, we went ahead and installed the fire extinguisher in on the C8. I freaking love that thing. There's still a promo code for that as well, RWD C8 Fire. Well guys, that's gonna do it for the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys like the support bars and the fire extinguisher. Head on over to Paragon if you guys want yours. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Later.